I'm so tapped up, and this is Steam World Quest. This is a card battle game set in the Steam World universe, which I guess is the thing. In fact, I was told, as far as the embargo is concerned, I can't show you the cutscene when you start a new file, um, because it might spoil the placement of the game in the universe's time thing. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I, I, I've never finished, I'm sorry, but I've never finished another <coughs> Steam World game. I know they're good games, Chapter but 11. I don't know why that's relevant. A blooming corruption. I'm sure someday I will understand. So, I'm pretty late in the game here. Um, this is just where I happen to be. The way this game works... Shut up, Twitter. Shut, shut your face. Um, the way this works is um, even though it's a card battle game, leveling up is pretty significant. So I kind of need to show you the latest battles to get, uh, you know, the highest difficulty. You know, to kind of show the way the game is when you're playing it, you know, the first uh, for the first time. So basically our troop of unlikely warriors here, including a couple bunnies, a fox dude, some kind of frog, arino, and just plain old mage and knight. We're gonna go into the Spookums Woods. You gotta have a spooky woods, you can't, I mean, what else are you gonna do in a fantasy game? So it's really neat to see the um, the series kind of in a fantasy setting. Um, I played SteamWorld Dig 1 and 2, like an hour or so of each, and they're good games, I just haven't, you know, I just get, get distracted by stuff. Uh, I do plan to finish them. Mr. Bat Friend! I have too many Bat Friends in my house. Unfortunately, the Bat Friends in my house will Get a little glitch for a second there. Fortunately, the bat friends in my house do not have spooky red eyes and just have beady little black eyes. So the way this works, well, I'll show you right now. It's a card game. You have, um, you know, you have your cards here. You can redraw cards if you can't use them. So uh, you have quite a bit to work with. Um, I didn't re-roll those very well, but uh, actually I do like this. I really like the interface and everything. It's got an automatic speed up feature. In fact, speed up is my default. So if things seem a little bit speedy, it's because I have the speed up on by default. Um, I'm doing... I am making a guide for this game, and I'm also making a, uh, a bit of a long play, which that'll come out after this video, after the game is launched. Um, but uh, if, that, if that doesn't tell you anything, um, I liked it a lot, so well, I'm still enjoying it. I assume I'm like two-thirds of the way through. I'm not really 100% sure. It feels like we're kind of heading towards a dramatic peak here. I mean, once you get to the Spookums Woods, that's where you know stuff is getting pretty intense. Unless you're watching Lord of the Rings, in which case that happens like halfway through the first movie. But uh, that's another story. So, the story, um, it's pretty neat. Uh, I mostly enjoy it for the card battle, which is, you know, what, what the game is. But uh, I haven't really had a good card battle thing like this since, uh, I guess it's a different kind of card game, but I replayed the, or played for the first time, there's a translation out for the um, second Game Boy um, Pokemon trading card game, which if you're in any place not Japan, you might actually be surprised to know that was in fact a thing. But yes, there is a sequel to that game and it's really good. Um, it's not a huge, like, it's kind of a Majora's Mask. Alright, oh, this physical game, I'm stupid. Um, it's kind of a Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time situation, where it's like, same same engine, obviously, a lot of the same con, like, a lot of the same cards, and like, you know, maybe 20% new stuff, but uh, new enemies and everything to fight, and uh, it's still really enjoyable to go through. But uh, this is obviously a little bit of a different kind of thing. You choose your three cards. You get a little bonus if you do three um, three cards from the same character. So I usually try to go for that when I can. Especially since the way redraws work in this, um, when you discard cards, they come back eventually. Like you, once your full deck is discarded, you don't lose like you would in like say magic or whatever um, because the deck is so small instead you just redraw it so it's almost never a big deal to um, to do a redraw so you get um, a lot of flexibility with what you get there's no real mana screw situations um, let's take a look at the deck building so 
you only get, <coughs> excuse me, having them good old seasonal allergies. As you can see, I have quite a few cards for each character. Each character brings up to eight, actually only eight cards to, um, to the battle. And those are all shuffled into the same deck and you can play three per turn. Um, you get to pick each character set of cards. So it's really, you really need to pay attention to all three characters you bring with you. Um, because you're going to get their cards no matter what. So you may as well be able to use them. I don't particularly like Auric as much. I've just been using him because he was lower level. But my usual party, um, you get five characters eventually. Uh, Thera, and Thane, Thera and Thane are really good. I just got them. Um, Galio has a lot of really good buffs and Copernica does good elemental damage. Armelie is your basically your, you know, standard meathead warrior person. She's she's good, but she does mostly, well, entirely physical damage, I believe. Uh, Auric is a bit more complicated, and Theron Thane, just, they're thieves, um, but they also do crazy damage and status effects, and they're just super fun. Like, in Venom, um, adds poison to your regular attacks. Um, they can steal gold, which, in this game, gold is quite precious, in fact, so... <laughs> I've been using that a lot because uh, you can't really just buy out the shop the first time you try every single time. Like, you kind of can in some games. So we're heading towards the Cursed City, which apparently nobody remembers the name of. I like the, I like the fierce buns. Buns are very good, and not enough games have bun, but these are good buns. Uh, did I miss? This kind of the, as you can see, there's a map for every area. And one thing I really like about this, you can go back into chapter select and replay any chapter. Um, and so each chapter, basically what I mean by chapter is, let's look at this big old map here. Um, this whole map is a chapter and I can replay this chapter at any time. So there's no missable content in this game, which is a huge plus for me. I, um, this game just in general is very low stress, very chill. Um, Though, so speaking of chill, I should probably put it on hard difficulty for now, because I'm a little bit over-leveled. Um, but yeah, it has really nice um, options. It has a colorblind option, basically. The show hero card icons is basically if you're colorblind. The, um, otherwise, it's only showed my color. Um, it's got a speed up button. I Every game should have a speed up button, honestly. It's one of my favorite features, because I, I don't have tons of times to do stuff. Um, it's got some other options, like you can just press to redraw to do it quicker instead of holding. I do holding because it's, you know, safer. You can disable bloom, always a nice option. I'll just leave it on. Um, it's not particularly offensive bloom in this case, but I always appreciate being able to disable graphical effects that I'm not a huge fan of. Mostly um, film grain and chromatic aberration, stuff like that, because that really messes up um, bitrate for videos. So here you can see me do a thief. So I, one thing I really like is that you kind of have to place your... The order of your cards matter too. So in this turn, what I want to do is I want to use Envenom to add poison to my attacks. I want to steal, and then that gives me steam pressure. Every time I use the strike or upgrade cards, the little sword or the gear, or the little rancherino, um, that gives me steam pressure, or skill points, if you will, that lets you use more powerful attacks. And the twins have, honestly, I don't know why there's allowed this powerful attack. The twin combo is the best card in the game, honestly. It deals so much damage. Also, they have little, like, Meeple-ese language, like Animal Crossing language when they talk. And when, when the rabbits attack, like, every once in a while, it sounds like they're saying, want good eggs? And I can't unhear it. And now you probably can't either, so enjoy that. Um, there's also weapons and equipment. Um, weapons have this, uh, the weapon determines which effect, uh, happens when you use all, ow. When you use, um, uh, when you use three cards in a row from the same person. So, there's kind of a strategy, there's not just one single best weapon, though. I usually use the one with the best stats. And like I was saying earlier, if you're having too much of a trouble here, like, I took like, quite a bit of damage there. Um, but this is on, you know, hard difficulty. Uh, and you can change difficulty at any time, that's another thing. I really appreciate when you can do that, because, like, I don't want to be stuck in a difficulty mode that's not for me, right? And so many games, like, I tried on easy mode. Oh, this is way too easy. I wanted to raise it up. Oh, no, so, sorry. You, you played three hours, you're gonna have to quit the game and, and restart. It's like, no. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> so, I find myself in games like that where you're stuck in difficulty. I end up taking a little bit lower difficulty than I would like because I'd rather be stuck. You know, I'd rather, you know, have a little bit too easy of a time than be completely unable to progress. But ideally, in my opinion, just, just let me change it, you know? So I feel I feel like this is one of those games with a lot of um, a lot of usability put in mind. Oh, we got some new cards. Remove all helpful effects on one foe. So that's an armillary card, which is pretty good. That's a pretty expensive card, but uh, usually I go for one or two steam power per card. Um, that way I don't have to charge up too much. But uh, there's a lot of different strategies I've found. Um, one tried and true thing that I've been using on a lot of things, probably too many things, is, oops, um, I don't want to attach coin per, cut purse, that's really good. Um, well, the thing I'm about to do right now, which is spam status effects from Galileo, he, er, Galileo, different, different, um, because poison and, poison just does lots of really good damage, especially on bosses, and, uh, blind. Obviously, is you know it's blind. It's you know what happens. Um, so that has helped me through. Um, I only had one boss fight that was like really rough, and status effects took me through that. And so I've been kind of leaning a little bit hard on those. But I mean, it's good. And it's so it's satisfying to find a game where status effects are good. The Final Fantasy is like really frustrating. I love Final Fantasy, but like. St status effects are garbage. They never work on any enemy that you would actually want them to. Um, the few bosses in Final Fantasy that are weak to a status effect, you have to be using a guide to know that. There's no reason you would cast it otherwise. It's just not... It's dumb. And I find status effects really cool when they're done well, and I find this game does them very well. So, that's part of the reason why I, uh, tend to use a lot of status effects, plus, you know, just... They work, so why not? Oh dang. We get uh, We got different ways to go. Usually there's um up to this point bass have been fairly linear, but uh, At least the right way to go has been fairly linear. There's lots of little side branches to get extra stuff So yeah, we're it's the spooky woods so bad things happen, but uh, there's reasons for this Which you probably won't see in this video, but hey, you know if you want the full story uh, that's what the game's for, I guess. I, um, the Necronomicog. I like the little robot puns and everything and all the little gears on everybody's designs. I do think, I think I'll like the, um, and one thing it does, it kind of gives you, as your characters get inspiration from the story, you get new cards from that too. You can buy, um, you can craft new cards at the shop, um, with the, the item drops. And enemy drops are pretty simple. There are... Excuse me again. There's five basic types of materials, then there's five extra advanced types that I don't know how to get yet. I assume just later on stuff. Um, everything's pretty simple and just, just like, just, it's just simple enough. There's a lot of strategy involved. There's a lot of, uh, there's a fair amount of equipment, but all of it is good. It's not like, you know, a Final Fantasy situation where you get you know, the bad fire item, then the good one, then the slightly even more good one. Like, there's maybe like two or three um, items that I've encountered of each type. So, um, items you get stay useful, basically. And I've been... I'm a big fan of a game that's kind of designed in a way like that, so I've been enjoying it. It's been... My, my play count is probably a little inflated because I've been making a guide and I've been you know, kind of going back and recording stuff, but, um, it's definitely been, what, when did I start playing? Thursday? It's pretty much been, <coughs> excuse me, all I've been playing, I hate frickin', why does nature have to be so, you know, plants, my, my, my body, my disgusting meat body does not agree with plants existing, so, every time it's spring, my body is just like, hey, could you guys not exist, and then they continue to exist. And it's just unpleasant for both of us. Um, a little bit of a rough patch here. Um, bum, bum, bum. I haven't been trading cards too much. So I can kill that guy, blind that guy. 
one naughty thing about my current team composition. I am actually built for um, quickly going through to kind of do the long play. Um, there's a lot of cards that will let you heal and stuff, and usually that is better than using items for these things. Um, I don't have those skills equipped right now because I am a naughty boy, but uh, we should be able to live through this fight. And there are healing items you can use. I'm loath to use consumables, but uh, they do exist. Oh, and one thing I really like, let me pop this. Let's try not to die here. I'm really surprised that the bunny twins are still alive right now. Um, you can, at any time in the battle, you can look around, you can see exactly what each status ailment means. Um, can't be healed, that's always fun. Um, you can see your enemy's exact stats. It's uh, pretty cool. Oh yeah, and that's this is also how you use items. You can run. Um, oh yeah, it cures a bunch of status effects. I don't. I don't usually use the consumable items. Um, Oh right, he's immune to physical. That's, that keeps messing me up. So yeah, some things are immune to things. Ow. And some enemies do get double turns, which is rude. But then again, you get kind of a triple turn, so... Uh, there we go. So, that's pretty much stream world quest. You know little robotic nutshell. I need to go back. There's apparently... There's apparently even a tower defense game in the series. I guess... I think that was the first one, in fact. Which I hadn't heard of it. But, uh, it's become... I, I, I really like when, um... They like hiding things like that. Zephyr Cape, huh? What's that do? Um... Ooh! I will put that on the bunners. Because they have bad HP. Uh, and accessories are all pretty much really good. I'm always like, hmm, which one should I use? Because there's so many good effects that I got now. But um, I really like that they kind of just explore different different um, genres all the time in the Steam World series. It's, uh, it's really cool to see. And a lot of really cool indie things, indie projects. Oh, I should have changed my cards up. This is probably a boss. A lot of cool indie things, like, they're just one and done. Which, I mean, I, it's, you know, keeps it from being built and all that stuff. But, like, sometimes, you know, sometimes you want another SteamWorld game or whatever. Anyway, this guy's literally a bird. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like the trend of indie sequels. Because, like, too often things are just one and done. Or... Maybe you get a radically different game, and it's not kind of the type you want, or even if it is the type you want. It's nice to have that kind of connection, uh, especially also for brand purposes, just like being able to say, oh, this is SteamWorld Quest. I liked SteamWorld Dig. Is that related? And yes, they are. All right, got to fight this guy again. Not entirely sure why poison is so effective against robots, but it really is. I love being able to open up with the twins. Because you get the money, you get the poison, you get the damage. This really have everything except HP. As you can see, they have half as much HP as everyone else. But, um... I could, but haven't used, um, gear to kind of... reduce that discrepancy. This is one of those frustrating situations where I don't quite have enough to do a full combo. Here we go. And that's usually what I do with a discard for. Also, Copernica, the, the mage there, uh, her current weapon lets me do one more uh, card swap per, to, for, uh, per turn, which has been very nice. This is actually the character that taught me to spam status effects, so it's appropriate that I will be spamming him right now with status effects. There we go. This is kind of your, like, joke mid-boss character. 
Not like joke as in like easy to beat. But I mean, he's a bird. I mean, honestly. He's a joke, yes. There we go. Caprice only works once per enemy. But, uh... Still lets me build that combo. There's also some really interesting side effects of the cards. Um, cards seem pretty balanced for the most part. There's some cards I don't use, of course, and some cards I find better than others, but... Um, there's some interesting effects, like some cards, <laughs> they'll only pull once. So um, that means you can't like spam them, but it also means your card pool is reduced for everything else. So you'll be more likely to pull every other card than that. And sometimes that can be useful. Though sometimes that can be annoying because then that means one less card for uh, for that character's, um, you know, trying to pull combos and stuff. And some cards have fun effects, like they'll have an extra effect if you follow up with a specific character. I don't have too many of those, and I don't usually use them, but it's, it's a cool idea. Please? No. no. Also, this one card lets me draw an extra card if you neutralize. There we go, he was easy. Wheel away! He looks like a penguin, by the way. He does not look like a canary. Do penguin are there are there canaries with like black bodies with yellow bellies or white bellies? Anyway. Oh hey. That's the end of the thing. So that's a good time to wrap up, huh? So yeah, this is Steamworld Quest. I've really been enjoying it. It's um good to see some card battle games that are not like super grindy and not like free to play which i mean free to play is one whoa we missed a lot of treasure uh this one that's another thing i like like there's so much stuff there's so much thought put into like making this an enjoyable low stress experience that you can kind of go into enjoy that's another that's to me that's kind of a, the hallmark of a really that's kind of what makes a good game into a great game is when you can really tell that the creators went in and they were like you know what we want um, we want our players to have a really good time. We don't want them to like stress out about stuff. And that's what I really liked about Horizon Zero Dawn. Totally different game, but you could just really feel that there was a lot of attention paid to not suffering a lot of the usual um, open world blah experience. That I usually don't like open world games, and I really like that one. Anyway, that's Steam World Dig. It's out on Switch. Um, I believe it is currently only on Switch, but they usually... It's one of those things where it usually comes to one thing first and everything else, so... If you're PC only, it'll probably be on there. Um, Steam World. I think all the other Steam World things are at this point. Um, same for PS4 and such. So, if you like it, hope you can try it out sometime. Tap Tap here. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you want. I read every comment posted, so don't embarrass yourself. Social media links in the description, including my Patreon and any relevant links to the game.